you know, this is a, you know, a horrible thing to happen, but on the other hand, it's a really great thing to happen to have just, you know, this beautiful log fall on your house and prefer to fell off to the side of the house, but. Hey, uh, my name's Eric Gustafson and I am uh, being welcomed onto the Woodland Mills chat thing here. And I really appreciate that. Uh, I've been a Woodland Mills owner since uh, January of 2021. We got a, a HM 130 Max. And um, my background is in two, uh, 2006, I guess, I went to Alaska for a few weeks to work with a, um, to volunteer with a uh, Bible camp up in Alaska on the Yukon River. And while I was there, uh, they had a saw. And so I worked on that uh, quite a bit, um, cutting up uh, lumber that they were using for building cabins and things. And boy, I tell you, after working with that for you know, three or four days, I just go, man, this is the life. I've been retired for about 10 years. And in during COVID, my son and I were talking about, well, we were actually, we were doing some Alaskan milling. Uh, and man alive, I'll tell you, after doing that for a while, I was just going, there's gotta be a better way. So I started looking online for sawmills. So then I came across Sawing with Sandy, his channel, you know, and I watched a lot of his videos and I just go, man, that guy's, really cool he really knows how to run that thing and it really seems to work well so i looked at a few other brands during that time but i just came back to woodland mills and thought this seems to be the uh, the greatest one i can get and it's reasonable price and i can since i'm in portland i could just go right over to the warehouse and pick it up and and we brought it home put it together and we've been milling ever since uh, you could see someone using it and they were very positive about it and some of the other mills um, just, it just, it, I didn't give, didn't invoke the um, confidence that I had after watching Sandy. So that, I think that was the biggest thing. And, and then the, the price range, I mean, the price point was excellent. The quick delivery was excellent. And then being on Facebook, um, uh, being on Facebook with some of the Facebook groups, you know, I mean, people just time after time, people are saying, hey, the customer service is excellent. Uh, you know, every box just got ticked off. Uh, the very first project we had was a um, chicken coop. <laughs> my wife, my wife has a bunch of chickens, and we didn't really have much of a place for them to reside, and so she kept asking for a chicken coop. And I was thinking something like, you know, maybe six by six or eight by ten. So I said, okay, honey, how about a eight by eight? You know, and here's a plan: I can do an eight by eight. She goes, oh, that's not big enough. So I go, okay, well, how about eight by ten? No, that's not big enough. Well, it ended up being eight by 16. And essentially, basically, basically we've made everything, all the things that we've built with the lumber from Woodland Mills has been, uh, we've made it portable so that the maximum width is uh, eight feet or so. Uh, and it's all portable, it's on skids. Well, we've had a presence on YouTube since I think 2009, but we really never did anything um, on it. Um, but then I guess the, the impetus was the uh, getting the sawmill. Um, I think one of the first videos I made was us driving over into um, what I call the belly of the beast in North Portland, going over there and picking up the sawmill. And um, that was, I think, one of the first videos. And so then since then, it's just been mostly, uh, mostly just uh, sawing, uh, cutting things up, showing. Uh, we, we went, uh, we stepped through the building of the chicken shed and the, um, the sawmill shed and uh, several things like some some uh, equipment maintenance and things like that but primarily it's uh, all related to uh, the woodland mill sawmill As far as the tree, in January, we we live on the east side of Portland, which is close to the Columbia Gorge. And so wintertime, sometimes we get some really horrendous winds coming down the uh, Columbia Gorge from the east. And uh, they'll be, you know, sometimes just, you know, for two weeks, we just have this horrendous wind. That cold weather comes down the gorge and it just wreaks havoc down here. Well, in this particular case, this, um, 60 foot or no it's about 80 foot 
uh, ponderosa pine that my dad planted about 60 years ago. And it was off to the corner on the east side of our house. Well, my wife and I were sitting in here on a Saturday morning in this room right here, our kitchen. And we were talking and I was actually texting with my niece who lives in Germany. And we're sitting there and then all of a sudden, man, it sounded like a freight train at our house. And so my wife just started freaking out, you know, like, what's going on here? We look up at the ceiling and I could, well, I could, I don't know if I can show you, but there's still holes in our ceiling where big limbs came shooting through our ceiling. And it took out about half of our roof. And luckily it didn't come down all the way into this room because it, it would have probably killed me. Um, but that was it. And, and, and so then we had to go up there on the roof. My one son and I had to go up there on the roof for about three days while that ice storm was howling and it was like 17 degrees out and it's just horrible, horrible. And uh, start cutting the limbs off of that and trying to get the thing off of our house. But it was so big, um, I think it was 36 inches at breast height uh, diameter. So it was so big that we ended up having to have a huge crane, like about a hundred ton crane come in here and lift, <clears throat> lift the, um, finally lift the tree off the house. And so the nice thing about it was, is that for the first three or three days or so, the temperatures were well below zero or below freezing, which then kept everything in ice up on the roof, uh, which was nice because if it had just started raining, if we had downpour of rain, it was just flooded our house. So we were able to get, um, even though it was so cold and we, my son and I had to be up there working and it was just horrible conditions, we got a lot of the limbs off and we got, got it to the point where we were able to put a tarp over the top the roof on this house is uh, is stick built with two by t two by eights, um, and so the, a lot of those were just crushed. So we had to get those out, and then bring in new two by eights. So we got those in there and, and, and got all the rafters rebuilt, got the roof structurally put back together, um, and laid out our um, our plywood uh, sheathing, and got it um, got it re-roofed. So at this point, the roof is sealed up. It's not leaking, uh, but we do, like I said, I can look here. There's holes still up in the ceiling here that where those limbs came through that we, so we have some sheetrock roof to do. I, I just, like I said, you know, this is a, you know, a horrible thing to happen. But on the other hand, it's a really great thing to happen to have just, you know, this beautiful log fall on your house. And, you know, I would prefer to it fell off to the side of the house, but uh, here's these beautiful ponderosa pine logs. So we cut them into um, uh, as much as we were able to, to move, we cut them into between eight and 12 foot uh, sections and drug them down to the uh, sawmill. And so today we've been actually doing the first one, which is uh, milling the first one, which is about a 30 inch diameter uh, ponderosa pine log. And it's, it's, it's turning out some really beautiful lumber. Yeah, this one was, this one was a little bit challenging, but we got it on there okay, and and we had to we had to nub off some a couple little spots to get the carriage to go by. There were a couple spots that stuck out too much, and we had to nub off a couple places, but not too much. It worked worked pretty well. Well, there's a lot of knots in it, so there's there were a lot of limbs on that tree. So like we were cutting two by sixes today, so they're they're about nine foot two by sixes. And there's some of them that have, you know, maybe a couple feet from the end, they've got a, you know, pretty good sized knot in the middle, which makes, you know, you couldn't use them structurally for like a rafter or something, but um, there's a lot of other uses that we can, we can put those to or, or cut them shorter. Well, our first project that we want to work on now and what we're milling these two by sixes for is a um, uh, greenhouse for my wife. And so we're planning on Again, making it mobile, so it'll be on skids, and it'll probably be about six to eight feet wide. And we'll just, we'll build a, a floor on the skids using the two by sixes, uh, usually with, you know, at 16 inch centers, and make a floor that's, you know, seven, six, seven feet wide by probably 16 feet long or something. I think that I'm just gonna go ahead and stick stick build it. The other buildings that we've done have all been post and beam. 
during that storm, I mean, we would see on, you know, turn on the TV and watch some news reports about what else, what was going on around town. And one of the problems that in Portland was that there were literally, I don't know, there were, you know, probably at least hundreds of other houses that had trees in, in you know, on their roof. I mean, it, it, it was all over town, these tree, trees falling into houses. And as more and more guys like me have a, you know, a sawmill sitting in their, you know, on their property, it's, um, you know, in the past, what no, normal, the tree guys normally will do is that, you know, they'll cut that up, that goes up into small pieces, you know, 18, 20 inch pieces and haul them off. And then they pay a, um, a, a landfill or a, a recycler, they pay them to dump all this stuff off. So the, so the tree guys, you know, are, are paying to get rid of their trees. And so for us, I mean, I've actually had uh, three or four instances where I've had uh, tree guys that I know, you know, call me up and say that they're taking down, you know, 10 or 12 Douglas fir trees that are 25, 30, 30 inches, you know, diameter. And I can, you know, just bring my trailer over there and they'll, they'll load on as many as I can haul. And that's great because uh, that's where we've gotten a lot of our lumber. Although we do have quite a few trees on our property. And, and so I'm have a reserve to cut down if I need to. Well, the, the first thing would be to um, find a good tree service. Uh, unfortunately, there's a number of tree service guys out there who are just, you know, basically in it to, to, to make a killing. And then if they are able to, you know, hand their logs off to some sawyers or, or local woodworkers, uh, then that's possible, you know, that's good too. But I would say just, you know, make sure that you have good relationships with uh, two or three different tree surfaces. You know, find find some tree surfaces that are um, really legitimate and, and, and do nice work and keep, keep the relationship up with those guys because they're the ones that get called out in those situations, you know, we've got a tree in a house or got a tree across the road. They're the ones that get called. And if uh, if they know that you're looking for logs, you know, sooner than later, they're gonna call you up and say, hey, I've got a couple trees here. You can, you know, can you bring your trailer and pick them up? And that's a, a great way to get uh, uh, free free logs.